Fifty years ago, uh, many of us were thinking about the next 50 and saying these are the things that will happen. Uh, and this was after Apollo started. Extended lunar exploration, looking at two-week missions on the moon, uh, 12 Saturn launches per year, six with lunar modules and six with uh, CSMs, never happened. The budget obviously became a killer on that. The moon program was over. It was politically inspired. There was no support in Washington for just going back to do science on the moon at that time. Human exploration of Mars. How many of you heard about the Collier articles in 1952? Probably an awful lot of you. That's, uh, of course, when uh, Brenner Von Braun, thinking about space stations, uh, Martian exploration, or capturing the public fantasy. And he envisioned that as happening within, indeed, within that next 50 years. And obviously, that's one of the things that has not happened. Fully reusable and inexpensive space transportation. The initial shuttle was supposed to be fully reusable. We never quite got there. The budget issues got in the way, so it became partially reusable. And it's been an amazingly successful launch system. Some of the things that were not forecast that did happen have impacted us tremendously. Three of those, the microchip and the microprocessors. In the early 60s, we had no notion about what those things would enable and what we could do as they evolved. So hitting the unexpected and taking advantage of it is key to us evolving a program of high science and exploration and aeronautics return. Robotics. Much of what was done on the moon in the Apollo program, not all, but much, now could be done totally robotically. If you look at the Mare rovers on Mars and see what the credible capability has evolved over the years with robotics capability. One of the messages there, I may come back to this, that we've got to constantly look at how we integrate the human being with the robotics. And obviously there are two venues for that, the remote control aspect of it, and you see that now in spades in the DOD with uh, UAVs and being run by pilots a thousand miles or more away from their target areas. We have to understand much better than we currently do how best to integrate robotics and the human capability, both uh, at a distance and in situ, and start to design things in in the lunar program and eventually on Mars, which takes advantage of what the humans really contribute that no way can we do robotically today and probably not in the long distance future and build on that. Robotics is not the answer to everything. One of the things Jim Beggs did was take all the center directors and AAs to General Motors, uh, their Hamtramck plant, which was just in the process of fully, almost fully automating the assembly of automobiles. Incredible robotic setup. We were dumbfounded when we saw that plant. Several days ago, I read an article about the Hamtramck plant. Never worked. The software was so complex, they could not keep it going and operating effectively. Overkill by robotics. So the integration, understanding where the robotics and the human element interface and how best to do that is something we need to treat as a system, and NASA really can be on the forefront of how to best integrate those two ca incredible capabilities. So as Yogi Berra says, the future ain't what it used to be. Yeah, it'll be probably better, different, largely unknowable, and that just says Darwinian-like, we must be adaptable and evolve with the systems. <laughs>